kids and I'm going live. All right, we're live. We've got nine viewers. All right. Something's wrong with my, something's, something's wrong with the system. It says zero viewers waiting. So I'm thinking, oh, should I go live? It feels weird to just tell everybody, hey, we're live, but there's nobody watching you. See that? But there is. All right, there's nine. Thanks for showing up, guys. Hi, Jacqueline. And Wings and Things Studio, you're back. All right, cool. Must have been uh, must have been worth coming back for more, huh? Thanks. Good morning, Mike. Thanks for being here. Hi, Bell Bell Goodridge. Good to see you. All right. Hey guys, thanks. Thanks for the greetings. All right. I'm hanging out this morning. We're in good company. I'm glad you guys joined me. And so I got an email that said, hey, how about a shallow stream bed? There's nothing on YouTube really uh, uh, like that, just what the email said. And I thought, you know what? That is a very good idea. That is a highly technical and difficult thing. So I'm going to show you how to do it. And it's not easy, but it is very possible, you know, just. I think of I think of uh, all the people that uh, that say, "Oh, you make it look easy," but then you know you go to try something. It's not easy at all. That can be frustrating. But uh, I don't think it's good to be fooled into thinking that makes it less possible. It just takes time, time and focus, and you have to choose what you got the energy for. But this is totally possible. We're gonna do a good-looking shallow stream bed running over some rocks with some reflection. Good morning, RDNA. I, for, I forget you told me what the mail is. That was your, you and your son's initials, right? RDNA. Thanks for coming back. From England, Mississippi. Cool. Thanks, guys. Argentina. All right. We're coming from, from all over. Thank you very much, Melanie. Thank you. I appreciate that. How you doing, Joe? Says deep thinker. <laughs> I'm a deep thinker too, actually. <laughs> I'm doing good, real good. Of course, we all like to think that our thoughts are deep, don't we? You know, I think that's uh, it's just natural to feel like when you're on the edge of your own ability to think, you're like, whoa, that's deep. But maybe it's really not deep at all. <laughs> Hello from India. All right, cool. Saludos, Luis Chavarez, Chavarez from Puerto Rico. Cool. Aussie boy here. Cool. Nice. You're my go-to artist for learning painting techniques. All right. Thanks, Sharon. That's very nice of you to say that. North Branford, Connecticut. Cool. I've never been to Connecticut. Did I drive through Connecticut? I don't think so. It's possible we did a quick drive through part of Connecticut when we went over to Virginia. I don't think I did. Pueblo, Mexico. Cool. Puebla. Puebla, Mexico. Uh, wait, okay, let me see. Puebla, Mexico. Eres incredible. Tienes un don marveloso. It is incredible. Tienes un. I'm testing my Spanish abilities here. But I see Marveloso, and I think that's a nice compliment. So I'm going to say gracias, <laughs> Claudia. <laughs> Midnight here, but I will not miss it, says Yen Gi. All right, thank you. But I won't be upset if you got to get some sleep. It's going to be recorded. Hello from South Carolina. Cool. And <laughs> that's profound. <laughs> says Melanie Culver. I like to think my thoughts are profound. It makes me feel very good about myself. Hello from Hungary. Cool. All right. Thanks for tuning in from Hungary. Excited to see how the painting comes out. All right. Thanks. Mm, means wonderful. Oh, interesting. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
where are you now she said uh, let's see one let's see one of this one of these that's directed at me i always you know what i do is i'm reading through the live chat i read other people's conversations i forget it's a group here it's not all about me i really like it when when those of you that know answers to things you know you chime in on the live chat that's actually very helpful i like that another from hungary cool all right in the morning can't wait to see bye bye <laughs> all right good my next door neighbor is from australia and so you know it's fun it's fun it's the conversations that we have always a, a good learning experience and he's got some some different different traditions and things you know i i went over there for his birthday party i gave him some toilet paper for a birthday gift and we we sat around you know doing folk music on guitars you know just having a good old time like a jamboree you know it was fun hey there lorenz mosa lorenz mosa hi how's it going thanks for being here and we've got amal berman a big fan all right cool thanks i gotta get a little closer sometimes to see that screen <laughs> All right, we're going to get started. Roof of sky in my oratory room. All right, cool, Claudia. That's nice. nice. From Long Beach, we've got Craig tuning in. Cool. Thanks for being here, Craig. Bought some paints to get underwater painting. I'm inspired. All right, good. All right, Mary C. Okay. First thing I do to get started. You know what this actually is? This is an old sample board from a workshop. I, I didn't paint this. This is a student's work, but look what a great job. What a great job this person did with that atmosphere color. And then the closer foreground color. That's what this X, it was an exercise. This is just a board and I clipped it up on here. So I get my brush wet. That big bucket you saw is my water bucket. And I like to just start with a wet brush so that the paint uh, it doesn't crust up in the brush and then i always keep a towel handy so i just keep a pile of these are these are maybe in need of replacing they're not much not much towel left to soak up the water <laughs> it's mostly paint at this point but all i need is a surface for discarding paint that's what it's for is just discarding paint out of my brush that i don't want and so that's a real frequent workflow for me is to go water and uh, swish it in the water, go to the towel, kind of sharpen the brush. I just like if that was a towel, you know, and it keeps this shape on my brush. And I'll be using this a lot for this. <clears throat> Starving artist in the house. <laughs> I hear you. I get asked a lot about business business how to make money doing things that I've seen people post videos how to make money as an artist and those videos do really well but uh, I don't have the right to make a video like that I still haven't figured it out <laughs> I have so much money myself <laughs> but hey I'm doing really good you know I like my house I like my family like my community what what more do you want don't forget everyone to ask Joe questions about painting <laughs> all right Thanks, Mary. It is fun to answer questions. This is why I do the work, because uh, I found when I was starting that I needed to know stuff that I didn't know. I was like, I don't know how to do this, but I feel like if I knew what causes that look, I could paint it. I felt very capable with my painting ability, but didn't have knowledge. And so it uh, became my passion. I'm just going to take a little bit of coffee before I get going on this. It became my passion to get answers out. So really, this is the, the driving inspiration behind all my work now is trying to uncover answers. Do you get new painting nerves or just go for it? Do you get new painting nerves? Yeah, a little, a little bit. If we're being honest, I do, but it's just a little. It used to be a lot more, but this is a repeat concept. I know that when I start painting these river rocks, it might go a little bit wrong on me for a moment or two, but I'm going to be able to bend it back around if it does. 
because I've done it enough times. But brand new concepts, there's a little more pressure on that. But I like it. You know, I've learned that people enjoy seeing me fail at things as long as it's not like long and drawn out. Nobody really likes watching that for a long time. I need coffee too. <laughs> yeah. It makes you think deeper. Mm. Makes you convinced that your thoughts are more deep than they are too. Have you ever noticed that about caffeine? When you're in the coffee shop, that's a bad time to talk ideas. Let me just give you some life advice. Don't talk ideas in the coffee shop. Wait for the caffeine to wear off so you have a better grip on what's practical. <laughs> All right, thanks for being here from Brazil, I think, says Walmir. Walmir. Okay. This is how we set it up to do a stream bed. And this the student already made a nice sky for me, so I'm just going to use that for now. It's going to have some kind of grayish reflection, some kind of orangish rocks. So if I right away just start putting an orange down there, so you can use red and yellow or you can just use orange. I'm gonna put red on there. And I do this a lot where I just distribute the paint on the canvas first. And you can see there's not much paint in my brush now. Look at that, not much there. Cause I just go one side, other side, then it's on there and it's not gonna dry fast on me while well, it's just mounded up right there. And then I'm gonna get another pile. Uh, uh, this is if I know the colors. And so I, I just have enough experience with the colors, I know that this is this is what I'm looking for right here. I'm going to do orange. And then I'm going to use black and white to create a bluish reflection on the orange. Because when blue meets orange in life, it creates a very gray, gray violet, gray violet reflection if blue meets orange. And so maybe it'll be good to put a little bit of of purple in that gray, but sometimes it already looks gray. However, I might have like some green, like maybe there's some green reflecting on there too. And if there was green in that mix, that would kind of bend it away from the purple and just go back to gray. These are the things I think about at the beginning of a painting is what would the light do? If I had this color reflecting on this color, this light shining, I just think about it. Okay, so now, I'm gonna set up my gradient. So for starters, we'll just do gray to orange. And it's fun, you know, to see it immediately take shape. It's fun to see it do that. So down here, I'm gonna put a little more red and I'm probably, um, I'm probably gonna want that to be not so intense, but it's gonna get a lot less intense once the gray hits it. So I don't need to do anything to the color. All I'm doing is setting myself up for success <laughs> by making this paint heavy enough, it's not gonna dry. And then I'm gonna get the other side of my gradient. That's gonna be black and white. So black right here. And we're gonna get plenty of white. So let's get white up in here. Right here, we'll put some more. And you know, just so that I show you here, let's show you the paints. I keep dipping in these right here. So I've got these. I'm going to try to do this left-handed so you can see my, my workflow. I go in the white, kind of turn my brush like this as I make it up to the wall. And then I just go like that. And that's my workflow that I can do much faster with my right hand. Let's get this camera back where it was. There we go. OK. So <clears throat> now I'm ready to start putting, putting my gradient in place. So right here, I've got my black and white. OK, this is going to be the reflection on my stream. I like to do this method because it's also fun just to demonstrate the power of understanding what colors do because I just am going to smear these colors together. It's going to create a gradient that resembles this orange reflecting this sky. 
I got to be careful saying what's going to happen before it happens, you know. But I've heard it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. You know that saying, better ask forgiveness than permission. So it's awesome if I just do it and then it comes out and it's like, this guy knows what he's talking about. He said that was going to happen and then it happened. And then I feel really good. I made a good video. If it doesn't happen, I say, oh, whoops, I was wrong. Sorry. Sorry about that. No big deal. Smooth it over. Do a good video next time. Here's orange. So I wait until I have worked the gray before I hit the orange. And then I'm not going to go right back way up here and blend it all together. Now I'm going to stay in this in this middle zone, this transition zone here. I'm going to get some red and the yellow. And then I'm going to blend it like this. So here is why. Here's why it's valuable to use gray instead of blue to put the reflection on because the gray is not going to turn green. So paint is going to turn green when blue mixes with anything. It's going to turn green. Greener than what light would do, but the gray will not. The gray happens to be the kind of result that I want to see. And you know, we're mixing pretty, pretty opposite colors here. So it, it just, when it mixes, you just get a, get a gray result. So I'm just mixing the blue and the red, getting an orange, and I'm going to make this gradient go down here. Looks like I'm going to have to do a little bit of repairs on my, on my underwater painting. That's, that's the underwater painting from last, <laughs> from the last video. Okay, let's get this gradient in place. And we want to see into this shallow stream. And I'm going to make it so that we can really see like the, the little river rocks and stuff in there. We're going to go back up here a little bit. Let's put a few little spots down here. And you can see right away if you start scattering these. So I go down here on the orange, up here on the gray, down here on the orange. Isn't that amazing how blue, I just want you to look at how blue it looks right there when it's on top of the orange. And then uh, how different that looks than this up here. But it's the same color. If anything, this is more orange because it's mixed with the orange, where this is not mixed with the orange. This is straight gray. But next to blue, a gray looks orange, looks opposite. Let's say it looks, I don't know, something orange, yellow. So it's something really different than blue. But then next to orange, it looks blue. So gray always takes on the opposite of what it's against. Just a fun, fun little pattern. Okay, so all I'm doing is just getting a general scattering of shapes. I don't want big shapes here. This is getting up in my background. So I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, break these apart. I'll leave my bigger shapes. So I'll, I'll borrow some of this gray, make bigger shapes down here. That'll be cool. Just right down in the very foreground but all just real subtle. I don't want to make real heavy reflection on this, just a little bit. Now notice that I did a nice bright color because I want to put sun, sun shining on the, on the uh, stream bed because it's shallow water. So if you're doing a shallow stream, then you want to think about, well, is it in the sunlight? If it's in the sunlight, then you might want to put a, a nice bright color on there. But this is still really on the orange side. But now you can see the power of a gradient. So just, just working with the gradient to immediately achieve the effect of reflection. A blue sky on an orange surface. But now, now it needs some work so this was just a base coat to just get my get my imagination functioning and help me to visualize it i'll probably end up painting over most of what's there with similar colors now i'm just going to straighten out this horizon with pure gray just going right across here get it get out those old uh, paint contracting skills you know i used to work on the paint crew painting door jams and trim it's valuable to know how to paint a straight line across a wall. You know, one of the best things to do is learn your tendencies. 
So if I tend to always slope a line up to the right or, or uh, up to the left, whatever, I can see that if I do a bunch in a row, I can see what my tendencies are and then intentionally correct those. So making nice level lines, very much about learning your tendencies and then, then overcompensating. It's house paint. That's right. You got it. Fun fact. All right. Oh, we got people from Georgia. Cool. Cool. Man, I would love to go visit Georgia. Georgia. Hmm. The South. It's such a mystical place to me. Magnolia trees and big shaggy things on plants. I've just never been there. It just looks crazy and awesome. Right now I'm seeing a deep underwater volcanic ocean. <laughs> All right, cool. It's fun what your imagination does with a little bit of believable color. Huh? Missed the very beginning. Is he just painting over an existing image? Oh, there's a board. This is a board. That's a good question. This is a, and I didn't explain this. I clipped this with these clamps right here. You can see my clamps on the edge. So I've got a painting under there. And for this project, I just ah, I'm just going to clamp a board. It's just a practice board, like particle board, real bendy, you know. All right. Come on down, Joe. Yeah, man, I would love to. OK. So now I'm going to put some details in here. And the way I'll do that is, you know, you can go either way. You can add, you can add bright colors into, uh, you can add bright colors to highlights, or you can add shadow if you want to tone it down and get darker. And so here, I think what I'm going to do is, thinking about it, I think what I'm going to do is start adding some black. I just decided. Okay. So if I take black now and just put it in here, every, uh, I'd better to show you than to tell you. So you got to get some black. It's kind of scary to just slap black on your painting. But learning to use black has been just awesome for, for my work. Okay, now it's important to me to always have like a simple go-to mix for my colors because I don't like using a palette and, and uh, fine tuning color and then going, it just takes too much time. I like to do everything right there on, on the canvas where I'm looking. So knowing that this is just a quick red, yellow, I've got the color, just put it on, I've got red, yellow, that's important uh, workflow for me. So yellow, red, and now I've got rock colors and you know, I have to adjust a little bit and get that get that red yellow mix. And so now I can put rocks in where this black is. And so look at this, I just bring it up to the black and it, and it squishes that black skinnier and skinnier. And now I've got, now I've got little rocks in there. And so this is going to be my, my workflow for putting rocks all over this picture. And then I'm going to want to put some, I'm going to want to put some, uh, little bits of reflection in here as well. So there, in the area where I want reflection, I'm going to just use more black and white, less of the orange. And so here I'm going to go like this. Let's get more. Oh, we want black first. Let's get black for the shadows. Get some shadows in here. That's going to turn real green, but that's OK, because we're going to put red in there and yellow like this, and then just squeeze it right in between the black. So wherever the black is left behind, it's going to create a shadow for me. And then I can just use a little bit brighter and brighter color wherever, wherever I want to come out of the shadows. So here's maybe some rocks. And let's put a little bit of white, maybe just a little bit of white and yellow on areas that I have rocks. So I'm not worrying too much about reflection at the moment. I just want to start seeing some, some shapes of little rocks coming through. And if I just get these three colors, if I get that mid-tone that was there, that, that red and yellow was my mid-tone. And then if I uh, 
blend that mid-tone into the shadow and then just do little highlights where I have the color. I don't want these highlights to hit my blacker areas. That's not going to be good. Sometimes you can just do a quick wisp right over it with the brush if the paint's starting to dry. And you get this soft, soft effect, you know. Softens all the shapes in there. So you can get some some cool, cool look. Sometimes it destroys the picture. So try it at your own risk. Okay, I've got a few rocks in there. And so now let's go to another spot. Let's just have some fun making some making some rocks here. Let's do color first, mid-tone color first. Red, yellow. And I'm intentionally steering away from using too much white because if I use a lot of white, then I'm going to run out of room to put colored highlights on this. You know, white is very much like gray or black in the sense of removing color in the, in the mix. You know, it's colorless, just, just different brightness. And so, you know, at the beginning, when I know that I'm going to want to add some, some highlights in there, I'll go easy on the white. So now I'm putting little shadows with the black. And here's a little bit different technique to accomplish the same thing. Just make black squiggles and dots, you know, scribble on it and just break it up so it's in, in different, different patches. But then... If you just blend the top edges of any of those little black shapes, just blend at the top of those sections. Don't blend. So you got to start looking at it in 2D. Don't try to see the image. Just systematically go through, blend the top edge. Then those gradients cause rocks to come up out from behind other rocks because now we've got the, the turning shadows going down. And so then if I just put a little bit of little bit of white in there for these highlights just on the colored spots right there right here's one now i'm just going to the top of any of my more orange sections then i've got some shapes right there so now i'm going to do a little more blending because this is really orange so i can take care of that real quick just by scooping scooping out into the blacker areas and graying out that mid-tone a little bit then I just have this subtle, subtle effect of some rocks again, and I'm ready to do some more. So let's go in here. I, I feel like maybe I could go a little bit more yellow on this. Don't you think? It looks really orange. Very red rocky. But you can already see the effect. Now the little bit of reflection coming across. It's kind of fun to look at the little picture there. So... I'm going to move a little bit quicker now, do a little bit quicker technique. And so I'm going to go like this, yellow and red. And I'm just going to blend it across here. This is just a speed technique. You know, once you understand the result that you're looking for and how the colors are separated, I, I think it's really valuable to understand which colors are in which places in order to look like rock. So we've got our mid-tone, our shadow, or highlight the highlight doesn't touch the shadow they both both the shadow and the highlight do touch the midtone but the midtone separates them so so once you understand that separation it makes a speed technique like this a lot easier to understand because i'm going to put my black on these redder colors and then i know that all I have to do is just bring some white in and put it on the color that's left behind. And so the reason I, I didn't mean to get red, I meant to get black. <laughs> I dipped in the wrong paint. So let's get black and put it wherever I have red so that it doesn't turn too green. And then whatever color is left behind, that's where I'm gonna put my white highlights. So now black is going in these redder areas, black here, black here, here, here. There's some red, there's some red. Okay, so it looks pretty obscured at the moment, but now I'm gonna go like this. Blend, 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 like this, just systematically going through. I feel like I could program a computer to do this. Wouldn't that be cool if you could just take all of your paint techniques, teach a computer how it's done, and have a computer paint creatively using random random number generators to determine how much of an effect was going to be applied.
buy it at which point. But then teaching it the actual workflow like this. You're first you're gonna put down. I might have had a little bit much coffee. Okay. I'm gonna stop right there. It's gonna take the fun out of the art if I start talking about how to make a computer do it. Okay. I'm blending the top edges like this. And all I'm doing is just looking for for black areas that I can just turn into gradients like this. Let's squeeze these together. It kind of looks like a rock. And just blending down into the black. So anywhere I've got a black chunk, I just blend down into the top, kind of get rid of the – looks like I got most of them. Here's a little one that's still got a top edge on it like that. And it sends rocks down into shadows. Quick way to generate a bunch of rocks. And then I want to get some – Highlight color, which is just going to be white on this one. And I'm going to go like this, a little bit of white here, 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 wherever there's color. And then I'm going to be sure to mix it enough that all the color gets a little bit less intense. It'll look more natural that way. You could do this with any, any colors, whatever colors you want the rocks to be. You can do it with those colors. But just remember, separate the mid-tone. Separate the, I'm sorry, separate the highlight from the shadow by using the mid-tone as the barrier. Okay, now these highlights, same thing. I'm going to blend any lower edges like this. So I want these to go down into the shadow. So now I'm just going across blending the lower edge, making a gradient on any lower edges of my light highlight. So see that little white dot, that a, a bright little spot like that interferes with the look of rocks coming up out of the shadows. So I just scoop that little guy out of there. And I just quickly go across the canvas looking for things like that. Now water has a way of squishing the squishing the image like this. So it'll be wise if I try to keep all of my shapes kind of long like this. So I'm going to stretch these out and I'll get a little bit more of an underwater look on this. If I just keep it stretched out like that. Let's do a little bit more yellow down in here. Yellow in there and there. Okay. Now maybe it's not all just rocks, you know, maybe we've got maybe we've got little bits of of uh, just just dirt or whatever kind of texture could be down there. So I don't want to go too crazy with things that take a long time to paint. All I'm going to do is just go across here, kind of stretch these shapes out sideways. And I'm starting to get my my foreground stream bed. And so in here, this this right here could use a little bit of attention. Huh? Let's go a little bit of yellow on the already most colored spots and put some white that makes some highlights like there 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 it's just a matter of sticking with your already established lights and shadows you know you don't want to you don't want to keep scrambling your colors you you get the you get the separation established and then your picture gradually will look better and better instead of worse and worse when you when with every every stroke you're going to the same highlight or the same shadow i know i've got a rock here so i so i'm not just randomly putting these down hoping they look like look like rocks i've already got the areas mapped out for me so that when i put it down it, it really counts you know and, and does the does the work that i want it to do All right, we got some rocks in our in our riverbed here. Let's do a little bit more. Let's do a little bit more over here. Get that area. I kind of liked the effect of doing the midtone first. So let's paint this out to the edge of the picture. Get red, put a bunch of yellow in there. 
And I'm going to try to do more horizontal strokes on this. It can be real nerve wracking, uh, you know, overlapping. So this is the importance of knowing, knowing the system, systemizing the technique so that you can rely, you can rely on the, the same, the same workflow, same technique coming and overlapping and blending in. Goodbye, Richard. I see Mary, I see you saying bye to Richard. Richard, thanks, thanks for being here. Photoshop doesn't really take the person out of art. It is just another tool. Yeah, yeah, for sure it is. Yeah. Yeah, I love, you know, I love digital art. Digital art's awesome. You can learn so much about the way light mixes by understanding what's happening in those programs. Okay. However, I don't think anything is superior. You know, I I steer away from any kind of claim on, you know, a superior form of art, like paint is, is better than, physical painting is better than digital painting, or drawing is better than than uh, painting, colored pencil, watercolor. I, I think they all have great, great things to offer your creative workflow. I mean, our end goal is usually to see what's in our imagination come to life. And so who's to, who's to judge? the validity of the way you get to that end goal. You know, if, if you've got that goal and you're finding a way to get there, I think it's, it's a good thing. I put a, you know, one thing that brings that to mind is I, I put a video up. I got an iPad. This was years ago. I was really excited. And I posted it on my channel. Someone right away said, Oh man, it's so disappointing to see you going digital. Everybody's going to just expressing disappointment about it. And uh, so, you know, I felt real, real shut down by that. It's funny how one comment can do that. Okay, let's go like this. Now I'm just kind of putting the, the grayer color in there ahead of time on this one. So I just, I'm smearing across, getting these long shapes, and the black is mixing in to a degree, but not too much. I've still got plenty, plenty of orange in there. And so now if I come in there again with my uh, let's just go like this. Let's put some some yellow and red. Let's get a little bit of our bright, bright orange back in there and get some nice bright highlights on on the tops of some of these rocks and we can break some of these up into multiple rocks like this yellow right there and then i'll get some white and work these work these little shapes just a little bit more but in the end it's just a bunch of little horizontal brush strokes on top of my colored areas Sometimes I kind of have to re resituate my brush in my hand. So I put the handle upward now because I was getting a lot of fat edges on the undersides of my of my highlights. So you know I'll I'll experiment with different ang angles all the time. Let's put a little bit of white in here, like this. Put some in there, right here. There we go. Now I'm just gonna try to. Try to blend out any lower edges like this. See that pure white that's on the lower edges of these spots? That's where I don't want a real, a real distinct sharp edge because I want this to look like the highlights kind of sink down into the shadows. Look, I'm going to put borrow some of this shadow right here. Put it right there. Wherever I've already got a dark color, I can kind of redistribute the paint while it's on there. Okay. Let's get that. I feel like that's a good one to kind of soften a little bit, a real light touch with the brush. Just a real light touch. And I'll kind of blend those colors together a little bit.
let's get that dark dark color down into those shadows using these horizontal lines to keep the shape side to side all right now i'm ready to move on so it looks like i want to put a little bit in here and i want to start getting the shapes smaller and so there's a way to there's a way to put the reflection on this so I'm, I'm not going too crazy with detail i want to show you what happens after i get this layer then i'm going to move to putting the reflection back on these rocks and so let's build some more of this this little texture in here and so let's put some more of my my color across here now i want the shapes to be smaller so i think the more you do this the quicker it becomes to redo any of it you know you can very quickly very quickly redo anything that gets lost in the process of mixing or manipulating the shapes it happens to me all the time you know it's i always i always will accidentally destroy little areas of the painting all right let's put some red so that my shadows don't turn super green when they hit that yellow so just putting little yellow spots yet yeah, red spots red spots then let's make some horizontal shapes like this and then let's put some black in there as well and so we'll do this Wherever I have the red, this is where I'm going to put black. And so notice how I'm just making these more horizontal now, more scrunched together, because we're getting further back. And so I want to have that natural perspective, make it look like the rocks are getting smaller because they're further away, but they're also getting scrunched from not just the perspective, but the flattening effect of the water. We really want to get that, that flattening effect. So I'm just putting little black stripes in here and this is not going to be the end effect i still have to have to uh, blend them all just a little bit so we're putting little black stripes all over this thing with the big brush okay and i think it's good if i mix it just enough that I lose some of that bright color. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some white and put it wherever I have that orange. So here's orange spots. Let's get, get this white mixed a little bit. So now I'm just putting little white spots in here and some of it's gonna turn gray, some of it's gonna hit the black, no big deal. I just wanna kind of aim Aim for the more orange spots right here. Now the whole thing is getting more gray, and that's good. I want it to get more gray, but just not so gray that I lose my color of my stream bed here. I just did a quick long stroke across that. Just a quick blend. Immediately get rid of all of your edges, but sometimes you can lose a lot of detail in that process. And then look, I can just kind of come in here and do the same working of the mid-tone. And what I'm doing is trying to blend the top edge of the black again. I just find a black area, like here's a black area. And what I'll do is blend across the top edge of that black area, create like a gradient of a rock going down in. And when it's just one, it's like, who cares? But if you do that to a texture across the whole picture real quickly, it makes a difference. Okay, so I'm going through here and just trying to obscure all of the top edges of these shadows. Just getting shapes that are that are real flat. All right. 
now if I want, I can put a few more highlights in here. Let's do some yellow and red. Let's get our orange. I'm just going to mix it on the side here. Sometimes that's easier. Put some white in it. There we'll get a nice... Nice orange highlight to just put wherever I already have my highlights. I'm not making new rocks anymore, you know. Well, unless you just really have vision for that. But I'm just going to the top of any of my colored sections where I already have color to make little rocks in here. Here I've got like nothing. It just kind of all faded out. So I'm just going to add some little, little dots of color to make it look like some kind of texture. Some gravel, gravel in there. Okay, now we're getting into some more technical stuff. We've got to go further with this to get the effect. We've got a lot of layers. We've got a lot of layers of things going on. And so now we're getting further on our gradient. So I've got to start making it more gray. I've got to start incorporating this gradient in here. So this is where I'm going to do the same strategy, same technique, but it's going to start just having more black and more black and white. Same technique with the midtone, the light and the shadow. I'm going to skip this back. Sorry, sorry about my hands. Just getting that back for a minute. Well, I read some of the live chats. Okay, any questions so far? I know, you know, maybe, maybe um, somebody's trying to paint along, uh, or maybe you're just trying to retain it and see what's going on. So, any questions I can answer before I move in? I'm going to overlap. And actually, I, I'm realizing this is a good opportunity for me to demonstrate a, a popular question I get How do you blend when the paint dries and you have to overlap sections? And so this is a this addresses that, and it's harder when you've got like a pure smooth gradient, but it's knowing your system of colors. Just know it, and then you can just match it. You do the same number of brush loads of whatever color, or you can pre-mix it in a pot. You don't have to put it on the canvas like I do, but I overlap and match the color. I don't blend it. Hey, you're welcome, RD and AC. You're welcome. Oh, that was to Betty. You're welcome on Betty's behalf. <laughs> Thank you, Betty. <laughs> Ever use airbrush? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I use airbrush. The simplicity of the process looks doable, but wait until I sit down and try absolute madness will unfold. Let me just give you a word of advice. Use lots of paint. Don't let the black touch the white. Okay, this is the this is the key. This is where so many paintings go south, is just not understanding the impact that that has on light and shadow and the shapes in your painting. Don't let the black touch the white. And it inevitably will a little bit. But you might be surprised at the results you get, keeping it horizontal, keeping it real horizontal, and then not letting the black touch the white. How will you paint Chinese rocks? Men, unless they look different than any other rocks, I'm just going to do them the same way. I don't know any distinct difference for Chinese rocks. You might have to explain that one for me. <laughs> Are you going to add anything that corresponds the scale of the image? Oh, yeah, we should totally put like some bushes and trees reflecting in there. We should do that. Does it deserted wagon would look great in the foreground? You, hey, thanks a lot, Jonah, <laughs> for saying I'm a rad dude. Love how you make it so easy. I'm learning so much. All right, good. Good. Thank you very much, Locks Me. You guys are too nice to me. You're too nice. How do you keep blobs of paint from coming off your brush? And you can't get it smoothed out 
or you put it on the canvas? Oh, that's a very good question. Sometimes I forget the importance of the mechanical skills that are developed over years. You know, the and I and I just I briefly mentioned this, which I don't expect anyone to have caught it. I briefly mentioned having to flip my brush the other way because I was starting to get a fat edge under it, creating, I wanted my highlights not to have a sharp white edge on the bottom of that little little dot of a highlight. And the brush was starting to leave it because it was sagging on the underside of the brush. And so I just angled it up to try to make that stop for a little bit. But I, uh, because of the the time that I put into the motor skills, I have a lot of accuracy in in how. And this is not not trying to boost myself or brag. It's just it's just time invested. That's all. But having the brush dipped just so, and then going to just the right amount of angle and pressure, so that you if you push too hard, it beads up high and starts caking on the brush. And of course, if you're too soft, then you don't you don't get the strokes that you need. So, so you get super familiar with your distance from the canvas, get super familiar with it so that I know when I'm holding this brush, I just, you know, I get here on the canvas and I can feel the ends of the bristles just barely touching and I can move it around. And then if I wanna get a little more pressure, I'm doing this quick like this, but it's just a very trained motor skill to quickly hit the exact same depth each time. It's all about the depth and angle of the brush being just right to release that paint. But I don't feel like that has to stop you from getting good color combinations with good results. It's just the workflow gets faster as you, as you train that motor skill of knowing the distance to the canvas. Hi, Luis. Luis, Luis. Louis or Luis? I think Louis. Please, no, Luis. I'm guessing Luis. Please help me. <laughs> Hi, please help me. I'll do what I can. Chinese rocks are more on a vertical level. And I have a little bit of struggle with the shadows. All right, all right. Well, when we do some rocks, as you know, when we do some more vertical rocks then, then uh, maybe that'll be a good thing to throw in there. So maybe when the stream is done, it'd be a good idea to have some going up there. So I still, I don't know Chinese rocks still. I've never heard that term, but, but I understand what you mean when you say vertical shapes in the shadows. So I can show you some techniques for getting some more vertical shapes and shadows for sure. <laughs> Amazing water skills too. It takes a long time to build that muscle memory. Yeah, it does. I but I think everybody becomes, you know, to me, just hu human body, the, the engineering that it takes to have nerves communicate with spine and brain to get perfect distancing. And uh, to me, this is just fascinating awesomeness. Everybody, everybody has muscle memory. It's just so mystifying. You know, you're bad at something when you play guitar. You wake up the next day and you're a little better. It's just amazing how that happens. And at no moment do you ever feel like you're actually getting better. You never feel the progress happening, yet it happens like while you're sleeping or something. Crazy. Muscle memory. And I love watching the old Bruce Lee videos. He's like nunchucks and he's lighting matches. A guy's throwing matches at him and he's got the end of the nunchuck striking a match as a guy throws it at him with the end of a nunchuck. Man, of course, that's kind of an exception. Bruce Lee was an exception. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing, more gray. It's an extension of my arm. It, at this point, it kind of is, yeah. <laughs> okay, now we're going to go like this. We're going to do the same color combo, red and yellow. And since I'll be adding more black, I'm going to use a little bit heavier on the red. Okay, so let's put the red. And the reason for that is because black and yellow turn green. I'm trying to avoid something that's overly green. Let's put some yellow rocks in here just to get some, some variation of color, right? Just to give me some redder areas and some yellower areas. And I'm keeping it real horizontal like this, doing little horizontal shapes. 
And then I'm going to go black in the red areas like this, black in there, here, here, here. Anywhere I see a redder area, that's a good place to put black. And then I'm going to go heavier on it. I'm going to do it again. Black where I already put that. Of course, I don't want to go too extreme here at the bottom because I want that to blend with my previous section. So up here, I'll put, put more of the black. And my paint is starting to dry. I went, I'm getting smaller on detail, so I just dunked my brush in the water. Just one quick little dunk. You can see it dripping down just slightly there. So I just got to real quickly go over it. Okay, now I'm doing these horizontal strokes. This is where I'm really minding the distance from the canvas again. You know, just enough, just enough distance to barely nick that, that surface with the long bristle of the brush. Okay, now I'm ready to put some little highlights in there. So see how that's a little more black than my previous sections. So that's going to set me up real good to do these white sections in here, white highlights. So I'm just taking this brush. You can go either way. You know, you can go against that long point of the brush. You can see there's a longer point and a shorter point on the brush. You can go, I swipe this way sometimes. Sometimes I swipe this way to get those little shapes, you know. And so it just depends on the, I'll experiment both ways with the brush <clears throat> and uh, find where it, where it suits me best. Let's get some more white on here. Whoa, we got a big blob right there. So now I'm going to tip my handle up because that happened when the handle was down. So now I'm tipping it up, changing the angle of it a little, just trying to mix it up. Nope, I ran out of paint. So here I'm running into the age old problem of trying to mix paint that is not wet enough to mix. And this never ceases to frustrate people that, that uh, including myself. And I get asked the question all the time, how do you deal with the fast drying paint? Well, sometimes I just get beat by it. So this is going to start looking a lot more like reflection back here. If I let that gray, after I get my shapes developed, I'm going to let that gray start mixing a little bit, be a little bit less careful where I put these strokes. You can see my slightly grayer, grayer texture now. As that gradient is going back, you can see a grayer texture. And so now this is getting a little bit too dry to work. I can probably squeeze a little bit more in here. Let's get a few more little spots of white. And this far away, I feel like now I'm dealing with just just brush strokes. You know, I, I'm not I'm not going to be as concerned with individual rocks at that at that distance. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try to get separation between the colors still, and that's inevitably going to create the look of rocks. But I'm not I'm not gonna do like I did down here, where I'm manually looking for the rocks quite as much in order to manipulate the shadows like I'm doing right here at the moment. Softening that shadow, making it less black, more gray. I gotta, forgot to silence my phone. I, man, I never answer unknown numbers, not in this day and age. <laughs> I never do that. So telemarketers got to learn how to <laughs> got to learn how to text and identify themselves. Actually, they do. Ma'am, now you're even your texting gets lit up with junk calls. You know what? I heard a funny a funny thing. Bob Ross. I'd always watch Bob Ross on Saturday mornings, and he would say, uh, he said he was talking about junk mail one day. He was talking about junk mail, and he said, you know what I do when I get junk mail? When I get all the credit card offers and stuff, he says I just put return to sender on it and just put it right back in the mailbox. Uh, that's pretty clever. That's a good idea. Shift the burden. <laughs> of course, it does require the does require the uh, work of writing return to sender, but I thought that was pretty good. Okay, here's my red-orange color, and then it's going to need some black. So we're going to go right here, 
and put lots of black in it this time. I got to get even more gray than I was up there. So now I'm just trying to stay off my yellowest areas because it's too much black to manage in small detail. But I got a real yellow area there, so I'm just going to stay off that one. I'm going to go across here and just by smearing it, look at the black streaks it leaves, just fat edges of black in between my in between my brush. You know what I did? I forgot to I got to move this back closer, my bad. Just go like this. Sorry about the shakes there. Ah. There we go. I forgot I had the I had the camera set way back on the skateboard deck that I'm using for a tripod. <laughs> okay. So now I'm just going to try to merge this gray into the one below it. And it's going to be even more gray so that the whole thing is getting real gray. And so this is where you can just try to get just try to get finer texture so that we have the look of distance, real horizontal, scrunch it. Just like when I did the other water scene where I was doing the blue water in that red rock desert scene. I just want to keep the shapes real horizontal. When you're doing water, if you can remember this one thing, very horizontal shapes because gravity works. It levels it out and the perspective makes it very horizontal. Now I'm gonna put white wherever I see my least black areas. And now it's getting a little bit harder. And if I really want to get more detailed, more technical with this, this would be where I'd pull out the small brush so that I could put my highlights on my color still. I still can see just enough to get these on my less black Areas. I'm not going to call them the colored areas anymore. I'm going to call them the areas that have less black. Right, and there's one. And I don't want that bright white. I got to get rid of bright white. So I got to go over it enough times that I don't have all that bright white in place. Okay, I'm going to borrow some of that white there, put it here. Get some of this, bring it down here. I'm just trying to blend this now. Just a few brush strokes to, to get the gradient to be a little bit more gradual. Gradually getting more gray as it goes, as it goes back there. And you can see that it needs more white. See how dark that is? So, so I've got to start putting more white on this. And again, I'm just trying to keep, I'm just trying to keep these on, on the areas that are less black, but inevitably it's gonna mix. Maybe it doesn't even matter. But I feel like just the effort goes to some extent, you know. You end up hitting your target at least a couple times with all these hundreds of brush strokes you're doing. And if you just create a texture that has these three things visible, it has a mid-tone, a light, and a shadow visible in the texture, then you'll maintain that look of kind of rocky, gravelly terrain just by having those colors present. Okay, now I'm gonna get more white and put it in here. And this is the top, this is the top. This is where it's too detailed now. I'm just gonna do horizontal brush strokes and I'm just gonna blend the rest out to gray because I can still do little tricks to get little ripples in the background, but it's not gonna be this. It's not gonna be this one. This is my, this is my detail technique for getting the rocky stream bed. We can do a little bit more over in here. So let's do some, some red and yellow right here. And then I'm gonna do my I'm gonna do my black after I get that yellow. I got a little more yellow down here. So getting just the right, you know, I've realized also that I that I blend this paint not just to a, an amount of blending and not just color wise, but I blend it till it's at a certain thickness that the dry time is, is going to be, um, is still going to give me enough dry time. So I use a light touch, smooths the paint out without flattening it out too much. So this, this is still pretty heavy. And again, 
there's there's kind of a time produced motor skill there of just the right amount of pressure in order to get the paint to flow out without smashing it you know too much pressure smashes the paint out it's too thin it dries too fast okay black is going to go in here i'm going to put lots of black up high where i want it to be more gray lots of black in here and lots of horizontal brush strokes like this <laughs> the, ki the kids are going out the front door right now to get uh, their free lunch and breakfast they get that every day it's so awesome the schools have been giving out free lunch and breakfast every single day they get to walk down the street and get free food i think that's just such a nice nice thing that the city's doing maybe that's across the country Okay, we're putting black in here, getting things more gray, and now let's put some white for the highlights. So white right here, I'll get a couple bright rocks where all this color is. A little bit in there, 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 there's some. And now we've got some, some sunlit rocks under the water. And then I'll just kind of try to nick the bottom edge of some of these highlights to get rid of the little bit of little bit of uh, edge that I don't want on the lower end of it. Then I'll go like this, put some white in the black, little highlights again. Look, I can just touch it with the brush like this and I get that long shape, get that flat shape just with the touch of the brush. However you do it, you just want, you just want long flat shapes because the perspective and the water combined really flatten it all out. I'll put more white in here where I have lots of black, get lots of gray. I wanna get rid of my dark shadows too. I just want gray shadows back in here because the reflection on top of the water is going to interfere with both the shadow and the light that's under the water. So I've got dark shadows down here. I, I wanna see those dark shadows you know, like like this, oh, whoa, it's backwards. I'm trying to see where my hand's going. I feel like a weather person. Okay, right here, see this dark shadow on this rock right there. And then if we go up north here, you're gonna find that we have lighter shadows in the forecast, right up here. Okay. Let's do a little bit of white. Just get it just light enough that it's more gray altogether. How about, how about one of these? No, I'll let it dry for a little bit, and then you'll see what happens when I go whoosh across it. Oh, this area is ready. Look, watch this whole thing just get softer. Because it's almost dry, but not quite. And so it just gets softer when I do that. Maybe you didn't see that. Oh, that one did. That one did more than I wanted it to. Then I can just blend away all of these, all those little spots that are too dark or too light, all with one, one pass. Because I want it all to kind of blend together and get grayer. And then wherever I see some color, you know, it's good to have just little highlights wherever you've got opportunity. Here's, here's a spot. Wherever there's a little more color, I can just put, put little highlights in here. Okay, so I've got a good base here. I've got a good base going, and this paint needs to needs to dry before I'm going to get a true uh, look at the colors. You know, the the part you just put down can fool you, and you can think it doesn't match. You got to remember that the paint dries darker, and all this has had time to darken and get get a little bit more more colorful. When it darkens, it gets a little more color in it. So I want to remember that. And well, it looks like I still need a little more white. Look how dark that is compared to this here. So maybe it'd be good to put a little bit more white here. Let's put a little bit more in here. Let's get the water. I'm just going to put a bunch of light, light texture in here. Having the red in there really does, really, really does good for the 
color of the reflection turns it a little bit more purple. And that feels a lot more like the blue sky. So wherever you add more black, going a little heavier on the red is a good, good move to get lifelike reflection color. Okay, now hopefully all of this is gray enough that I can add, I can add my, you know, I've been mixing my black with it. So hopefully I can get a nice intense highlight. I'm gonna, I'm looking at this. I wanna see that we've got the same intensity. So the, the color's a little bit saturated on this. So I, I really want you to see this effect. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the saturation down a little. because this next effect, I'm gonna add more saturated color to make the faces of waves on here. So let's just take that down a bit, maybe right there. Let's see if that looks good, like this. Mm -hmm. Let's go back up just a little bit, a little bit more. The saturation is very much uh, the what creates this next effect that I'm going to do. So here, it's going to be funner to look at this picture if I just complete this real quick here. Let's put black and white in here. Complete our gradient again. And let's even just add just a little bit of like magenta in here to turn it a little bit more purple. Go like this, get that reflection. That purple is a real good, real good look for reflecting on anything that's brownish or orangish. You know, we get a real nice distant reflection color. I'm just gonna blend that right into this higher section I did, get that far away reflection. Okay, so this is the last thing I'm gonna do today. And uh, then we'll continue on this on Monday. We'll do some more work with it. I'm gonna put the face of a wave coming across here. And so the way I do that, you know, the face of a wave will magnify the image. And so I'm gonna take a spot, put a brighter, more saturated color because the reflection is now uh, not obscuring that image. And so, the, uh, what I mean by obscuring that image, the, the reflection is adding color that makes it more gray. So wherever the wave rolls down in front of me, I'm going to see more color in that in that face. And so I'll reproduce that effect like this. I'm going to put red and yellow, and I'm just going to I'm just going to pick a spot and do like a diamondy shape, and I'm going to make it more intense and make the shapes bigger and more stretched out. So let's put let's put some orange in here. And we're going out like this. We're going to taper the ends. And I'm going to go yellow in the bright spot. Like this. We've got sun hitting that, hitting a couple rocks in here in the face of the wave. But look, I'm going to make them big and kind of blurred out. We're not putting a bunch of detail in there. So we're going like this. Then we taper out smaller, smaller as we go this way and keep it real horizontal, real horizontal like this. Okay, now we've got the face of a wave. Let's get a little more of that red real quick. And then we can even put the little black in there because we're gonna see that black also. Put a little shadow there, a little shadow there, okay? And so this is where we can see right into that water. Now I'm gonna blend both edges of this. And I just wanna keep this more vibrant, the colors more vibrant, as long as it stays a little bit brighter than the rest of the picture, it's gonna be good. Okay, then how about a little bit of a highlight? Let's go like this. Yellow, I'm just coming over here and mixing it on the very edge. I just wanna get a bright highlight, yellow, and white, just pure yellow and white is what I'm thinking. I think that'll be that'll be a good highlight. And we're just gonna make like 
a little stripe maybe of light you know maybe it's like the caustics coming down on the rock maybe going this way this way like that okay now we've got a little bit of light shining in the face of a wave i'm going to do a few more of those before i before i slave over this one you know i'm going to do a few more get the effect going and i'm going to aim for spots where i maybe already have bright color so in here let's make a bigger wave now let's go red like this down here is a good spot because look this is just kind of boring right there so right here i'll just go we've got a, we've got a wave shape going right across here and by using my same color system we've got yellow yellow we're making a few real big rocks because it's magnifying the image it's real big right in here and then maybe it starts to get scrunched as it goes down near the base of it again Let's go like that. Put skinny lines on the top and bottom to kind of kind of level out that shape. We want a nice horizontal shape in there. I'm going to get some black, a little bit of black, and put it in these red spots for a shadow. Like that. And then we're going to bend it sideways at the bottom of the wave, go around, you know, kind of outline that section. And then I'm going to put my bright highlight. Here's my yellow and white highlight that I'm going to put right on the face of it. I need a little bit brighter color in there too. Like this. Big shapes, big shapes, because it's getting magnified. So if, if compared to the rest of the picture, those are big shapes, then it's going to look like the face of a wave. Let's bring this down here, put, put more in here. Big and blurry. We don't want little tiny. We don't want little tiny shapes in here. Then let's get a brighter, brighter highlight, get that effect, make some light coming across, maybe right there, a little bit in here. And then the image always kind of bends sideways more as it goes to the top or the bottom of the face of the wave. Like that. Now you can put those bright highlights anywhere. You know, if I just kind of gray this color, this right here, you know, if we make a grayer color here, let's add black and red to it. Okay, this is a grayer highlight color now. Add some white. It's not as bright, it's not as yellow. I can I can put this all over here and add those those little um, zigzagged zigzagged lights. I'm making it more yellow. I'm gonna get more yellow because it, it looked kind of kind of reddish there. So you can put little stripes of of those highlights wherever you have a rock. You know, is a good spot to make those show. But let me tell you, a little bit goes a long way. If you really want to get into the details of these these guys, you know. They do kind of happen in crisscross shapes. I'm going to add water over here to my brush. And, you know, you will have shapes kind of crisscrossing where you have the point of a wave, then it goes down onto another one. They kind of split into two sides because a wave has a sharper curve and a less sharp curve. That kind of concentrates the light. But here's the fun thing about this effect, these caustics, as they're called, is they... They um, redistribute the light. So wherever you have more light, you have to have less light somewhere else. It pulls it from one spot, concentrates it into another. And so it's a fun effect if you can put it right next to, you know, put it in an already bright area and put it right next to a dark area. So here we can just put little tiny stripes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop right there and do some more of the faces of the waves now. So let's do some more real, real bold colors to make wave faces. Let's do red. We'll do another one right in here, and this one will really show up because it's in this darker area. Let's go down here. Let me, let me go down just a bit. Oh, sorry, you didn't see me paint that. <laughs> I was off camera. 
Hmm. Okay, let's go red right here. And then I'm going to put yellow in here. We're going to make a big ripple going right across right here. And we just want the colors to be, be slightly different as, as they're in here. So just slightly different colors. Bright yellow in here. So look, I've already got rocks visible. I'm going to run with that. So I'm going to take these lines and pull them down. We'll leave a line right there, right here. We're going to pull these straight down like it's really getting magnified. Right here's one. Right here, here's a rock. I'm pulling them straight down. And then I'm going to take the, looks like I might need a little more red. I really slammed it with that yellow. Let's go a little more red where I'm going to put that shadow. Here's a shadow. Little, little shadow in here maybe. And then I'm going to take the black and go like this. And then just stir that around a little bit until it's a little bit more, a little bit more blended, but not too much. We've got big blurry shapes. I'm going to scrunch the shapes at the bottom of the wave and at the top of the wave where it's not going to be as magnified like that. And let's put a little bit more yellow in here like this. Nice bright highlight coming down there. I like that yellow. It's cool. Here and here. And that'll be a good spot for a highlight. So let's take yellow and white and go like that. Just put some bright highlight right, right on the face of that wave like this. And so now I can kind of see this red outline on there. No big deal. Just grab some black. Grab some black and just kind of blend that gray around. It'll turn more gray when that black hits all these colors and it'll blend right into the other. Right into the other colors that are in there. Okay, now I'm just trying to get rid of my paint, wipe it on my towel, and do a little bit more back and forth blending. Yeah, let's put a little white in there. A little bit much on the black, huh? Yeah, that's kind of cool. It's kind of like it hits a little ripple. I'm going to leave that. It's like a sharp turn in the water right there. Put a little bit of white on the top. You know, you can really add to the reflection if you get, get a ripple that you really want to stand out. Just put a little bit of black and white right across the top. Like that. Okay, let's do one more ripple. And you know, I'm gonna borrow this color. I like that gray color. I'm gonna put it on the top of this one too. I like that effect. A little bit of black and white on the tops of these guys. Maybe top and bottom. Look at this. Kind of cool coming right across the top of where I've already put those waves. Okay, I don't want to overdo it. I'm right on the verge of overdoing something here. <laughs> I'm gonna get some water. Get some water, make this a little more subtle across the top of that one. Here was one I did right there. We'll do one more. One more I think will be fun. Let's do one down in here. This is kind of a 
kind of a boring spot. It's a good place to put those ripples. So let's do one in here. Real big, real big area. And again, we're just going to do real bright colors, big magnified images compared to what's around. OK, and then we're going to go around it with black like this. Let's go black through the red. I'm kind of, you know, I haven't really spent a lot of time explaining this process before. I'm realizing as I'm going at this moment that this is kind of a good workflow to get that black and also outline the wave with it a little bit. Because if we hit it with white right after we do that, it makes a real nice little, real nice little highlight on it. OK. I'm going to bend this up just a little more, a little more this way. Like this. Now we've got our magnified rocks in there. Nice and bright orange colors. And then we'll come in here with some white and just go right in these black sections like this. I'm going to grab a little bit of water, make this flow out a little bit faster if I add some water. And I'll go around this section right here. Let's get some white. Look, around this one here. Let's put white in here and go around that one and then up this one. Then around this one. But I got to make sure I don't go too white. I don't want bright white down there in the foreground. So see, with every step, we're just trying to build things that tell the same story, you know? With every step, we're putting, putting more of the same effect in place. Here's a rock. OK, here's the rock with reflection color. Here's a rock. OK, here it is with the reflection, you know? So we've got, we've got shadow and highlight within reflection colors and then within the colors that are on the faces of the waves as well in order to get this effect of seeing through the water and down at these things. OK, so then when you get way up in here, it gets much simpler. It gets much, much simpler up in there because all we have to do is, and all of this could be done with a more, more simple method. I feel like none of this really needs to be, needs to be real complex uh, like this. I've put great detail to show you how it's put together, but I feel like you could be way sloppier. And if you got these colors in, then you'd probably get the effect. So I just saw that looked a little bit. I just wanted to like flow it out a little bit. But <laughs> I'm working, working on one part of the painting while I'm talking about another. And I'm going to put a little highlight in there. Put a little highlight right in here, right down the face of the Then we just zigzag it where it's, the shape gets scrunched again when it comes down here. So we make sure that those reflections get real scrunchy when they come over here. Oh, sorry. Sorry, you actually can't see what I'm painting. OK, in here, just making it go more down on the, on the front and then more more scrunching it across as it gets to the edge of that, that face. All right, so now let's put like some, let's put some rocks. Here, let me get this cord adjusted. Give me a second here. Let's go to the other side. Sorry about the shakes. I'm moving the camera. Ah, oh, there we go. So up in here, I'm going to put uh, some little waves to finish it off. OK, so let's do let's do uh, our underwater colors. It's just like a brown, right? So we've got red and yellow. And let's add a little bit of black to make it more gray. 
let's see if that looks see if that looks brown in comparison. I'm sure it's going to look very brown in comparison to this here. So we can just put little tiny strips going back back here. And we got to keep the color light. If we want if we want sunlit water, we got to make sure that we stay nice and bright on this. So I'm going to lighten this up. One of the reasons you can't see it very well right now is just because I've got it dark. So I added white to it. We'll go in here and put little little stripes. So getting real real level with this is important. So wherever I already have color is where I'm going to aim with these. Wherever I already see the color, we're just putting a little bit of the, the underwater color showing here more and more. As it comes forward, I can highlight some of these areas that I've, <clears throat> that I've already got established. Just taking my light brown and going like this. You know, I did the same. I basically did a version of the same picture in oil. And I gave that one to my mom. She's got it on the wall. But I was learning. That was the painting that I learned to do this. Studying studying the, um, the way the shallow water affects all of the lights on, on, the, on the ground underneath. And so... You know, I always, I always like those paintings that represent a first time I was delving in and studying. It took me forever. Man, that was a painstaking process. Here, I, I know exactly what steps I'm going to do before I do it, so it's going much quicker. So I'm just looking for my colorful spots and giving them a little blast of, of this lighter color and keeping the shapes very horizontal in order to get the, the look of water that's flat and in perspective. And I could do like a, you know, you can do any shapes you wanna see in there. If we suddenly do a, a strip of brighter, you know, here's some, here's some gray section in here. So if I wanted to, just come in here and go like this. Here, let's do it. Let's do it right in here. Let's just go like this. Go right across with red and yellow. Real straight, though. Real straight. I'm going to go across. I'm just going to make a real bright, sunlit little wave. It's coming forward. We're seeing the light in it. You make another one here like this. I'll get some of that yellow. Put that same yellow highlight in this one too. Like that. Do a real long one across. And then I can get my black. Same thing as before, just a little bit different shape that I'm working with. I'm going to get this red and black mix and kind of go across the bottom, level it out a little bit. Get that black, put it over on this, going for the red areas. Okay. There, now we got some, some longer, some longer, bigger waves. That's kind of fun, huh? Let's put some more highlights in there. Let's take a little bit of white and yellow and just blast these, blast these little areas here with some bright highlights. That needs to be a little bit cleaned up, that one. We got kind of messy there. I want the faces of the waves to really look like they're expanding the image and and showing less detail actually, you know, because they they just kind of they just kind of stretch everything out and you just get this big blurry 
blurry stretched image. And I can just have that quick impression of that effect by just not putting nearly as much of the of the separation between the shadow and the highlight and all that. Let's get a little bit of our bright yellow highlights, maybe over here some that I can just borrow real quick. Go here and put it on there. There we go. I'll put little dots of highlight. Wherever I have a light spot, I could just put a little dunk. It's kind of fun to put little, little bright highlights. Use yellow and white and just put little highlights in here like this. Anywhere you got a anywhere you've got the the rocks showing from underneath, you know, I already did those down there, but up here, just a little bit of highlight. Wherever you got these, and as long as it has that, as long as it has that color, it needs to have the color to it to look like the to look like the underwater, you know. A little bit in there. Let's do a little more of our a little more of the orange color. Add some white to it. Just lighten it a little bit. That looks like a good highlight color. We'll just come in here and touch some of these. Some of these waves going across, you know, and this reproduces a, something we're familiar with seeing, you know, two things telling the same story. Like I always say, we see those little strips of light in the, in the faces of the waves, making these little, little highlights in there. Let's put a little bit tumbling down over a rock. Okay, so let's say that we've got, let's say that we've got like some some rocks in here. Let's put a rock like, yeah, this will be the last thing. Last thing for real, for real this time. It really is the last thing. <sighs> gray, like up near the horizons. Yes, gray. That is exactly right. Thank you very much, Mary. And um, uh Somebody's asking about the color. Yes, I used just black and white to produce the reflection of a blue sky on an orange surface. And so now here's what I'm going to do to make uh, water flowing over a rock. Let's put this same kind of thing, but not in a wave shape. Let's go like this. Let's put a big, let's put a, a big rock over, over in here, like like this, let's go put a rock right there. And I'm gonna put the face of it first, right? So it's a big colorful face on the rock. Then I'm gonna put black, it's got shadows around it. And those shadows aren't gonna be real dark by the time I add the gray. Now let's add red, enough red wherever I have that black to create a brown. Because if I just have yellow and black, it's gonna be too green. Of course, green might be cool. We could do a greenish rock here. Let's say there's moss on it. Let's leave the green. Okay. Darker on the edges, brighter on the face because I've made my sun kind of coming down and hitting it that way. And so then where I have the all this black. So this is really rising up out of the water. So my effect of the lighter reflection color on the top is going to be more extreme. So before I do the reflection, wherever I have black, I'm going to add if I'm trying to make reflection, I don't want green reflection. So I'm just adding that red in there to keep it from turning green. Now watch, I'll put white right across the top of this. Put white right there. And I'll put white right here. And go out this way. And let's keep adding a little bit more. Let's just keep adding some more white until we've got a real good reflective top on this guy. Maybe we've got a couple couple little bumps elsewhere too while I'm in this color. I don't know. Okay, we've got reflection on the top. And then here's what we do. We just take that and maybe pull it down a little bit. Maybe in these X shapes. Like that. And now we've got the water flowing over this rock. 
And I'm gonna get a little bit darker color in here now. Maybe, maybe just grab the shadow that's already in there. Maybe I'll just use black. Let's see how that works. A little bit darker shadow in here, right under the reflection, like this. Because this effect of it having the shadow and then the bright color, where the water kind of stops the light from hitting it. It's going to be real, real fun to see what it does. Okay, now I've got reflection on the top, so we're not done. Let me get a little bit better gray. I'm going to put black and white right here, pre-mix a little bit of reflection color. There we go. Put a real good visible, visible gray color on there. And then I'm going to put the face of it coming down like this. So white. Remember when we did the desert scene? I did little waterfalls like this. So we just get white, smash the brush on here, and straight down like this, cascading water, just a little bit. I'm going to go here, here, just a downward stroke at slightly different heights, like that. Now the water's ramping out over that rock. And then all we got to do is level it out on the bottom, because perspective is not going to let us see a whole bunch of zigzagging shape so we just want to level this out so let's get our get our brownish colors go across here maybe let's put some let's put some black going across black and white to make some grayish splashy white water just trying to level that out a little bit on the bottom of that so it looks like it's tumbling down into more flattish water and if i just repeat that effect over and over then i can put the water just tumbling over rocks just tumbling and tumbling we could do another one right here we could do some more some more right in there let's do some some yellow right on there and then let's do some black around the edge of that let's put black on like this, and then we'll take that black and we'll put it under as well. Then we'll put the put the white on top. Coming over the boom, 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 like this. And then we put the then we put the white underneath it. Flowing out this way. Going slightly downhill. So then I'll just kind of connect these two things together. Then I've got a little bit of little bit of blending work to do here. So let's take this and blend it up into there. A little bit less reflection on the face of this rock, maybe. Right there. And then a little bit less black on the top, maybe. Let's put put some more white. So this is how I do it. Just understanding these parts. Okay, if you want to know more, if you want to know more about, you know, the anatomy of waves, how they work, how to paint them, you can always get my How to Paint Waves bundle, which most of you already have at this point. You're very, very supportive audience out there. I really appreciate it. And so if you're watching this, wondering where else you can get information on how to paint waves, I sell that at my site, muraljoe.com. I'll put a little bright highlight right in here. Let's go red and yellow. Just a little blast of color right there. Just a little bit right in there and in there. Oh, I forgot the little white water things come down on the front of that, didn't I? There we go. Let's get some white. Let's get some white and make these. Just real short, you know, you don't need much. You know why that happens? 
I'll tell you why this happens, because knowing why is so fun. Why you have this white. I was looking at, uh, I was just watching the water just roll over rocks one day in the creek. And I realized that it was brighter wherever it's tumbling out like that. I, I realized, man, that's, it's like when the air is under the water, it reflects even more than when the, it reflects even more than when, when on the surface of the water. So this reflection on the surface of the water is not as intense as when there's air under the water. That's when I realized, oh, we're looking at a bubble. It's, it's a bubble under the water. This is where the water is ramping out and you're seeing the airspace under, under that little waterfall. It, it, it's just looking at a bubble. So I thought that was just kind of fun, you know, fun to understand that. I'm gonna just put some color back in here so that you can see the separation between that little waterfall and the reflection up there. Just putting a little color. I just went straight to my maroon that I haven't used it for the whole painting, but I went went to this like red oxide, it's called sometimes it's a dark, dark rust color, pre-mixed. I just went to that for a shortcut. Get this orange color in here. Then let's get a little bit of highlight. Choo, choo. Put yellow in here. I like seeing that color on the front of those front of those rocks, like the sun catching them. Okay, I'm going to stop there. And any any questions, any comments, we can we can do those now before we shut her down. Let's put that put that camera to the side for a moment. There, now we can see the picture. We didn't have time to redo the uh, didn't have time to redo the sky. But hey, there's more more to happen. I'm going to show you how to put some surroundings on. We need we need an embankment. So we'll spend one more day on this. We'll do an, an embankment on there and put some of the reflection coming down in the already established reflection areas. Okay, let's see if anybody wants to talk about something. It's cool to know about the bubble, yeah. And in the ocean waves, you know, watching it tumble, you totally see that curl. You see the underside of the curl. It's essentially just the bubble because it's air underwater. And so, you know, when you're looking at a, looking at, it doesn't have to be completely enclosed in a sphere underwater to be that same effect. It's just air behind water it is high, highly reflective. What time on Monday? Uh, yeah, 9 a.m. I'm just doing 9 a.m. every time. I stopped sending out, uh, I stopped sending out the links, sending out notices. Too much work. Too much work for me to do that. I'm just here. For anybody that's interested in stopping by at 9 a.m. on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Those are the days that we're doing it. Gives me a break to get my head together in case I really mess up on Monday and Tuesday. <laughs> this is great. All right, thanks, Marilyn. Depth is there, and it looks like water rolling over rocks. Hey, all right, that's the goal. That's what we wanted. Will you put any blue on the water? Oh, we totally could. You can put uh, as much blue in there as you want to see. So something really valuable to understand is that if we have highly sunlit water, then, then we are not going to see as much blue. So highly sunlit surface. So this is shallow. We want to see the, this isn't like when we're doing deeper water. And so the color of the sunlight bouncing off the rocks highly affects the reflection color so i used gray to look like that blue however when i get way out here if this just went on and on and on we would start seeing bluer and bluer reflection back in here that would happen but i just stopped when the effect was there hey you're welcome claudia you're welcome uh I'm reading the rest of the comment here. Thanks. It was amazing. Your creativity uh, seems you have a big gift. Sorry for my not well English. Hey, I'm glad you can speak English at all. It's a real honor to have you tuning in. After all, it's not like I'm speaking your language. And so I really appreciate it. Well, 
what color will the embankment be? Well, I'm going to make it consistent with what's under the water. So I, I think that it's real important to here. We get a lot of, we can end up getting a lot more saturated color, you know, uh, when it's under the water. And so if I want this embankment to come onto the shore, just, just real quick, if I just do a, a, different version of this color so if i want it to look like it's reflecting a little bit i'm going to go i'm going to go in between these two colors you know more saturated than the gray less saturated than the orange and so if we just if we just put a line and so i go red and yellow let's use maroon maroon is a better shortcut for that orange let's put white in there and we can build an embankment here let's put some more yellow Get it more orange. I need to use up this yellow anyway. And then let's add a little bit of black and white to it. Black. Black in the redder areas, maybe not in the yellower areas. Okay, here we go. And then when this comes up and meets the shoreline with this less saturated color then just having that that edge on there that no longer has the texture of reflections you know we're just we're just doing this just making a shoreline then it'll just create a just creates a stop on that so here we can bring that in this is the color i'll start with on the embankment and maybe we go real light where this, you know, if there's like sun glare here, let's go nice and light with it. Let's put more yellow, more yellow and white right here. If we go over here, do the same thing. We would have an embankment maybe coming out of, coming out of this area. If we had the ground, I would just add a lot of white to it because the water will saturate the color but also remove it'll also block a lot of light so if i do a lighter less saturated color i can make it like the shoreline coming right in here and then all i've got to do is just make the you know maybe make some of the light and the shadow harmonize harmonize with the you know bring some of the shapes of light and shadow so that it looks like it's going under the water do some lighter color here lighter color here See, it's starting to look like the bank a little bit, just like that. We'll do this. We'll get into this next next week. Man, I just started going on it. I was like, oh, yeah, it's a good idea. We should totally do that right now. Yeah, let's do some, do some more saturated color down here where this water is still covering it. Saturated darker equals underwater. Go like this, put some black in it. Okay. Maybe put some yellow in here. There, see where it comes up? When it comes up onto this shoreline, that less saturated color looks like it is coming out of the water because it's less saturated you know it's kind of like putting a clear coat on your painting that that clear coat has a way of uh saturating the color which is a curious thing i am curious about why that happens it doesn't let whatever you know really what it does is it stops it stops the light from above from coming down and mixing as much with the color underneath so if we've got orange when it's on the surface, it's going to get hit by a lot more sky. So the blue is going to hit that orange. It's going to get washed out. Where under the water, it's all separating. You only see the reflection on some spots. So you have more saturated color looks underwater. You got up to 195 people watching. Yes. All right. All right. We got a good number. But probably what's more valuable is the, is the long-term future of the, of the video. 
you know, I kind of, I kind of like the smaller crowd on the live stream for being able to see this, you know, like David Bell from Scotland. Welcome back. Glad to have you here. Uh, you know, it's just nice to see repeat things that on a scale I can remember and follow up on comments, be able to have conversations. This is nice. I like it. Uh, I know a lot more people are watching than than who are leaving the comments, but this is, I like the smaller scale. We'll see. Uh, you know, I, ha I always have a hard time strategizing YouTube. The only, the only progress I've made is just, <laughs> is just whatever organically happens, you know. I'm just trying to be me. Stream is in Arizona. Yeah, Flagstaff, Arizona. That's where I'm streaming from. Weather here is amazing lately. Just awesome weather. So nice to have warm, warm summer breeze. I was sitting out, out on the back porch, back patio at night, last night. And it just happened overnight. You know, here in Flagstaff, we're high altitude. You know, I don't know, like 3,600 meters, something like that. Uh, um, so uh, I don't know. You can convert feet to meters. I know in feet we're at 7,000 feet. And uh, so the weather can drop. The temperature can drop very suddenly. So when spring or summer comes around, it's cold, it's cold, it's cold, then it's hot. All of a sudden, then it's cold, and then it's hot, and then it stays hot. <laughs> it just goes like this until it's time. So we just had that one day where the heat came and stayed. Boom, it was hot. You step outside and it just feels amazing. The stream is in Arizona. Actually, much of my inspiration is looking at the local scenery. If you went, if you went to Oak Creek Canyon, you would see a lot of riverbed with reddish colored rocks like this. I have everything I need to start a painting except courage. <laughs> go for it, Mary. Just do it. Practice boards. Just go crazy on, on practice boards. Give yourself freedom to make trash. Thought they were aliens, says Paige Mary. Getting warm here in Vegas, says RJ. Oh, man, I don't want to live there. Cloudy with the chance of COVID. <laughs> yeah. For sure. But it feels like a very small chance these days. I go I go out, I walk around in the nice summer air, I wave to all my friends, you know, I'm like, why are people not out enjoying this? My paintings are going nowhere fast. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know that feeling. I got a pile. It's not going anywhere fast. You know, they spit they start out with the sprint. All my paintings start out full sprint full speed ahead. And then, you know, it's just like a runner that went too fast at the starting line. Ugh. Slow down, run out of energy. Maybe we could do something else. I'm tired. <laughs> good day, good day. Thanks for being here. 10, 10, 10 book. Getting colder here. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe you're in a different season. Right, yeah, I get it. Uh, so scary for us over 60s, yeah. Yeah, to each his own. You know, we all have to decide where our line is. Hey, you're welcome. You're, uh, you're welcome, Julie. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure giving my time to this. Do not know how you do it. <laughs> yeah, focus is a big deal. So if you want to know the secret, the real secret to why I fluently produce things from imagination, painting, drawing. I've always loved art. It is the attention span. That's what it is. It's the attention span. You know, if you spent all of your waking moments thinking about one thing, you would inevitably get so much more proficient at that one thing. So I, I think other people, when I was a kid, I started drawing with the pencil and it was stuck like glue to my brain. I just was always thinking about the next shape I wanted to try to reproduce. Shapes and lines were just mesmerizing. I never wanted to stop. I just knew that I was like, I'm I'm an artist. This is what I, I was meant to do. And I, sh I always say, I'm gonna show you my childhood drawings. I haven't done it yet, but I, but I will. And so, at an early age, 
I, I was going through all of the same struggles that uh, many people are uh, in their adult years. And the only reason it, it happened at an early age because I, I just put in all those hours early. Well, other people were moving on to getting good at sports and social skills, <laughs> how to make money, <laughs> keep a job. I was just learning drawing. I, I was like dead to the world other than uh, creativity. I just, anything creative, I would go out into the fields, forests. I lived in Ohio, I would just, you know, out the door, no shoes and and just explore. And, and uh, we were highly unsupervised as children, me and my four brothers. And I was mesmerized by everything I saw, bugs, animals. I always just looked and wondered, never stopped wondering. That's where this all comes from. It really does come from having it ingrained in my lifestyle from a very young age. I just had to find it again in my adult years. Show us your drawings. That would be awesome. Okay, okay. I will. I'll try to remember that for the next live stream. I've got them here in the house. Draw on your school books. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Definitely did that especially the standardized tests. I was like, why am I doing this? I don't get it. And I was just, I, it was so annoying hearing all the pencils drop on the desks as the other kids were finishing. I was like, I give up, man. Just filling in shapes like a dot to dot for all the multiple, multiple choice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right, thank you, thank you. And a little applause again. What a great comment. Thank you. That's how I feel about perspective. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I get it, man. There's, we've all got minds that are kind of bent bent toward a certain a certain thing, and so some some sometimes it's just not fun to try to stay focused. If I if I I think that if I always thought about columns and rows and charts numbers, then I I could be very proficient at it. But I would hate my life. And for that very reason, I don't have the drive or the energy to put all of that that time into doing it. And even if I even if I did, there'd be somebody that it came natural for the interest level, the love, the passion. They'd be absor absorbing more because they'd be loving it the whole time. So, you know, that's how it is. I think for me and art and painting, numbers are my enemy. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned to love numbers now. It doesn't make me any better or faster with them, but you know, I've learned in my old age to appreciate all the things I didn't didn't do well with in school <laughs> in the younger years. Do you draw all the time? All the time. All the time. Man, I gotta show you something. Hang on. Okay. Okay, right here. Here's a stack of the drawings that I've been doing just since this whole COVID shutdown. I don't know, what is there, maybe 100 here? And every single one of these has sketches on them like this. You know, I'm studying, studying human form so that I can show people make a good video how to draw these things. So here's my, here's a, a girl learning how to do the wrinkles on the clothing. And we've got more of the same thing, just practicing, practicing trial and error. And then I've got a person running. That was an animation. It's upside down. That was an animation. I did 15 frames. I put that on Instagram. You can look on my Instagram how the, how the animation came out. And so this is just drawing after drawing of this of this same concept, just girls standing, just ironing out all of the little quirks, getting a technique that's reliable. I drew this one just this morning with my five-year-old on my lap, and it made it onto the onto the video that I'm cutting for YouTube. We'll see if it makes the final cut. Here, here's something different. You know, I was experimenting with different postures on the human form. You know, so I was just having fun with it, drawing a you know, drawing a person behind another person. 
it's interesting, you know, flipping it around and looking at it on the screen. It's like, oh, that's very crooked. <laughs> anyway, I draw a lot, all the time. I, I drew pictures before I ever painted. So I'm actually, I feel much better with pencil drawing than I am with painting. And so maybe that just doesn't fit the common paradigm that exists today. But, but for me, all of it came from knowing how to draw. Wrinkles and clothes. Forget about it. Oh, man, I can show you how to do wrinkles so quick, man. Wrinkles and clothes. Man, there's one thing you need to know. Keep track of the valleys and, you know, wrinkles. They star out from high points and low points. And when you have more than one high or low point with wrinkles starring out from, they don't come to a T. They gradually conform to each other's direction. If you just remember that, of course, it's better if I just show you an example. But so many of those things, they seem super technical. But what, what five-year-old looks at a chapter book and says, oh, I think I can do that. I think I can read that book. You know, they're just, you're just mystified at people that are fluently reading a language. It's just knowing, just knowing the answers. You have an Instagram? Yes, I have an Instagram. <laughs> Once in a while, I post something on it. Draw paint. What's next then? Well, we're going to finish up this scene. We're going to finish this up. But I do think it'd be fun to do a draw along, you know, doing something with, you know, it's live a live drawing thing. That'd be cool. It's not as, it's not as, I feel like drawing maybe, I don't know, depends. It's less eye-catching. So for a guy like me with not a whole lot of viewership, makes a less eye-catching YouTube video. The thumbnail isn't as, you know, colorful and fun. All right, well, I got to wrap it up. We are at 11.11. Boy, I went for a long time. We started at 9. This went for a while. Well, I really appreciate you guys sticking around and chatting with me. I see the numbers going down. <laughs> going down real fast. We're going to turn this off. And uh, uh, I'm going to be back on Monday. So Monday again, 9 a.m. That's Mountain Standard Time, Arizona time. That's where I'm, that's where I'm streaming from. Can't believe your son is five. <laughs> Remember when he was born and you weren't sleeping? That's right. Yes, I do. He was a hard one. It's very hard. Love your ability to help us understand how you see the eye. All right. All right. Cool. Thank you. Okay. I got to end the stream, guys. I'll see you on Monday. Thank you very much. It's always a good time.